Thank you for being here this morning. It's great to be worshiping. Beautiful, beautiful day to celebrate and honor God through worship. So thank you for being here. Thanks, team, for leading us. If you're online, thank you for joining us this way as well. Uh, you may not realize, those of you who are here most Sundays, we have a, a, a pretty decent amount of people who are typically online with us, depending on the time of year. Some of those are folks who are traveling. Some of those folks who are homesick or just couldn't make it. Some of those folks live in other parts of the country and even a couple times in other parts of the world, and they're connected with us almost every week. Some of them support us financially. Some of them are in some of our hybrid small groups where we do that online as well. So that's just a great ministry that we have that I just wanted to, to make sure you were aware of. So with that said, let's go to God in prayer this morning as we look into to Scripture. God, I thank you for uh, this day to, to worship you, and I just thank you for meeting us uh, just right where we are, wherever we are in our spiritual journeys with you and whatever's going on in our in our personal lives. And so we just lift all of that up to you. I pray that uh, we would be able to just drop some of the distractions that we came in with so that we can maybe hear you speak into our lives uh, this morning. And as we look into, into this psalm this morning, I pray that you would just open our hearts and open our minds as to just how we can live for you uh, in just the way we spend our time and our energies and the way we live our lives. In Christ's name I pray, amen. So for the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about how we can be filled spiritually or refueled spiritually is, is some of the language that we've used and, and why all of that is important. Today, I want to talk about the importance of, of just having rest in our lives, um, having, having space in our lives, having the ability to go, right, just have some breathing room uh, in, in our lives. And I purposely chose to talk about this today because in Three hours, I'm leaving for vacation. And so I'm, I'm very much practicing what I preach this morning. Okay? So, uh, but, but rest is important. Space is important. Sometimes, you know, I, I cover this subject almost at least once a year. Sometimes we talk about it in terms of margin in, in our lives, things like that. It's important, though, if we're going to be healthy physically, emotionally, relationally, spiritually, all of that, we're, we're, you know, when we're always on the go, when our calendars are jam-packed, our kids are in all kinds of stuff, um, and we don't have any kind of space in our lives, we don't have breathing room, we don't have margin in our lives, uh, we end up with, with this. We end up with more stress, right? We can end up with more anxiety in our lives. Uh, our focus tends to narrow, and we're only able to maybe focus on a few things and maybe not the most important things. And ultimately, though, our relationships suffer. Uh, which is why we're talking about this today. And the great thing about this is, is, is in Scripture, God addresses this very issue uh, and of, of us needing rest and needing space and all that. In fact, when God was, was building the nation of Israel, remember they'd been in Egypt as slaves for over 400 years. He, he brought them out of Egypt, and he had to give them some rules to live by. And he had to give them some rules to live by as he was building the nation up from scratch, basically, because they didn't know how to live other than as slaves, which is pretty much work, 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 work. Right? And so when God was establishing the nation of Israel, one of the rules that he built into the culture, that he built into the nation in the Ten Commandments, was, was this, this idea of taking a day off. I mean, you've got, you've got the love of God that commands you to take a day off. Right? And so from the very beginning, God says, he says, I've created you to function best when you have some breathing room, when there's, when there's space, when there's margin, when you're rested uh, physically, emotionally, relationship, and all, all of that. So today, I want to talk about that, and I want to talk about uh, specifically just about our time and our schedules. And because here's the deal. Uh, my inclination, and I suspect most of our inclinations, is to, is to cram more in and to take nothing out, right? That my inclination and your inclination is to do so much sometimes that maybe we don't enjoy some of the things that we actually do. Uh, so today we're talking about, you know, how to deal with this. And if this is not happening to you, if it's not an issue for you, how to keep it from happening to you. And, and there are a lot of things that, that we could talk about with this. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at a passage in the Old Testament that speaks specifically about our time and how we should view our time. And, and that's important because your time, think about it, your time is the one thing you can't get more of, Right? You can't get any more time. And if you, if you misspend your time, if I misspend my time, I can't do it. I can't go back and get more. I can't buy more. I can't work for more or, or any of that. So, so we're going to look at, at some wisdom this morning that was given to us 
actually by Moses. It's in Psalms, Psalm 90. Uh, and you might think, when you think of Psalms, you probably think of who? David. Yeah, David, right? Because David wrote most of the Psalms. Psalm 90 was actually attributed to Moses writing this, this psalm. And, and, when you, and, and so think about that. I want, you know, the, the reason I think we should pay attention to this psalm as it speaks to us about time in, in our lives is because Moses lived to be 120 years old. And during that time, Moses had some incredible, incredible experiences. I mean, he, he grew up in Pharaoh's home, right? He was there for all the plagues of Egypt when God brought the plagues on Egypt. He led the Israelites out of, 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 of bondage, you know, that spent 40 years circling Mount Sinai in the desert. Um, he ended up standing on the other side of the promised land, looking over at the land God was going to give to the nation of Israel. So, so Moses just has a whole lot of perspective, particularly on, on time. And in Psalm 90, he gives that perspective to us. And the wisdom that he gives to us, I think if we will apply it, it has the potential for changing our lives. So I'm going to read it to you. It's, it's not super, super long, but it is a little bit tricky because it's an ancient text. Uh, and, and so it's a little bit difficult to translate and sometimes a little difficult to understand. So I'll read it, and then we're just going to unpack it a little bit along the way as we go. So here's what Moses says. He, said, he says, Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. So Moses is talking about the nation of Israel, and, and, and he's saying, Lord, throughout the generations, we, the nation of Israel, we have lived within the context of who you are and how we relate to you. And, and he continues, he said, before the mountains were born, or, you, or before you brought forth the whole world, so before creation, he says, you were, you were everlasting to everlasting, God. And, and so he says, God... You are, you are everlasting to everlasting. And somewhere in between all of that, somewhere between everlasting and everlasting is me, Moses. And somewhere between everlasting and everlasting is us, right? the nation of Israel. And then he makes this, this incredible statement. I love this. He says, he said, God, you turn people back to dust, saying, return to dust, you mortals. And you may not realize this, but Moses actually stole that line out of the Lord of the Rings series. <laughs> Right? Okay. I, I didn't fact check that. You might want to fact check that, but I'm, that's where he got it. But seriously, this was, this was Moses, this was his way of saying that, that our lives, as much as we don't like to think about it, and as much as we certainly don't like to talk about it, that our lives have an expiration date. I mean, that our, our time is limited, our days are numbered. So he continues. He says, a thousand years in your sight or like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. And a watch in the night was about three hours. And so in other words, he's saying, he's saying what seems like a long time to us, you know, our lifetime, you know, in, in the scheme of things, God, a thousand years to you is just like three hours. And, and then he says this, he says, he says God, you, yet you, you sweep people away in the sleep of, of death, and they are like, and now he's talking about you and me, all human beings, and he says, they are like the new grass, in the morning. And he's saying they're, they're like a little baby, right, with their, with their whole life ahead of them. And, and they're like new grass in the morning. This is an analogy of the human life cycle he's giving us. And he says in the morning, that new grass, he says it springs up new, but by evening it is dry and it's withered. He says, God, I guess from your perspective, you know, our long lives that we get so excited about, I guess from your perspective, it's kind of like grass that pops up in the early morning and by the evening it's gone. I mean, isn't that motivating? Aren't you glad you came to church this morning? Some of you are like, man, I wish I'd been online. I could swap over to Netflix. <laughs> but he goes, he goes on. He says, he says one, may, one, one, days, one our days may come to 70 or 80 if our strength endures. Yet the best of them, talking about the best of our years, he says that the best of our years are but trouble and sorrow, for they, talking about our years, for they quickly pass and we fly away. And if you've ever heard that old school hymn, right, I'll fly away, that's where that, that hymn comes from. But here's the point Moses is making. He's saying our time and our lives, they pass by very, very quickly. And he continues and and, and this next verse is a really, really confusing verse. And I, I'm going to read it, and then I'm going to try to explain it to you. Uh, but, but he says this. He says, If only we knew the power of your anger, God, your wrath is as great 
as the fear that is your due. Now that just sounds like a really poorly constructed sentence with a couple of words left out, doesn't it? Uh, and and it, this is a difficult verse to translate uh, from the Hebrew. And if you read different translations in English, all of them translate a little bit differently. But I think this is probably about as best, as good as it gets. So, so let me tell you what I think this means rather than what it actually says in the English. Here's, here's just one idea. Here's just what I think uh, this means. And I'll put it up on the screen. I think it means this, that, that if we could see God as he is, we would give him the reverence that he is due. If we could see God as who he truly is and how he truly is, we would recognize that and we would give him the reverence that, that he, is, he is due. Here, here's what I think Moses is saying. He's saying, you know, God, you are, you are everlasting to everlasting. You're this incredible thing that we can't fully understand. He said, and, and I'm like a piece of grass. You know, I'm, I'm here today and gone tomorrow. He says, my life is, is going by so fast, but if I think it's going by so fast, my life is really only a fraction of a second to you because three hours is like a thousand years to you. So Moses kind of, he kind of pauses and he says, if, if we could somehow, if we could somehow see God as he is, then when it comes to our time and when it comes to how we live our lives, especially with our time, he says, we would we'd give God the reverence he's due because I only have a teeny tiny bit of time to do something with. And, and, and wouldn't the right thing to do uh, be to somehow, in my little tiny blip of existence, to somehow give God the glory that he is due with my life and how I live it? Here's another way to read this. If, if we could see God as he is, we would be more careful with the time that we've been given. So now, now Moses, he comes to the application part of all this. And here's what he says. He says, he says God, teach us, because we don't get this naturally. He says, we need to learn this. So he says, God, teach us to number our days. Or another way of, of saying this is, teach us to live as if our days are numbered. Uh, but, but we don't do that, do we? I mean, not most of the time. I mean, we don't, we don't live as if our days are numbered. We typically live as, as if we're always going to have our days, right? They're not numbered. You know, as we're always going to be here, we're always going to have our, our loved ones. We're always going to have this job. We're, we're always going to, you know, be able to have time to chase that, that dream. We, we live as if our days are not numbered. But Moses says, no, you need to learn to number your days, which means to live as if your days are numbered. And, 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 and we've actually done this. We just don't realize that we've done this. We do this all the time, and we don't know that we do this. But, but if, if, you're, if you're married, right, especially if you're a woman, when you planned your wedding, you numbered your days, didn't you? Right? You, you made a list of all the things that had to get done between the time you said yes and the time you were going to say I do. And you worked towards that date, right? You numbered your days. If you were a student, right, you, you numbered your day. You had a test coming up, and you put that date on the calendar, and you knew at some point your days were going to run out, and it was going to be exam day, and you needed to be ready. Or if at work you've ever had a presentation that you had to do or a deadline for something, you've done this, you knew what you had to do, and you knew how long you had until you had to show up and do it. When you're planning that vacation, you put that date on the calendar, and then you begin to, again, make that list of everything you had to do in order to be able to go away and actually enjoy your vacation knowing everything back home was taken care of. So Moses says, what if we just lived all of our lives that way? What if we always used our time that way? He says, God, teach us to number our days. And then, and then here's the promise. Teach us to number our days so that, so here's the purpose statement, right? This leads somewhere, and here's the result. He said, so that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Teach us to, to, to live as if our days are numbered, because in living as if our days are numbered, we will, we will gain wisdom in our lives. We will gain wisdom in terms of, of what we should leave in and, and, and what we should take out and what we should turn up and what we should turn down and, and what should be the priority. But, but if you live it as, as if your days are not numbered, you will continue to fill your days with things that, that later on you'll wish you didn't fill them up with. And, but, but when we number our days, we immediately, Moses says, we immediately gain some wisdom. We gain a, a, a better perspective. So, so here's the summary statement of everything that, that I think Moses just taught us. That, that remembering that our time is limited 
provides us the wisdom to know how to spend our limited time. Remembering the time that our time is limited, it gives us the wisdom and the perspective to know how to spend our limited time. And we can break that down uh, even further and say it, simply say it like this, that my time is limited, so I have to, I have to limit how I spend my time. So let's, let's talk about us. And, and what I want to do today is, is something that you probably don't want. And, and, but, it, but I think it can be really, really helpful uh, when it comes to prioritizing our time. In fact, what I'm going to share with you and what I'm going to give you today, I've, I've shared with you this before when we did another series where we were talking about margin and stuff like that. We did this a, I did this a few years ago. And, and, and the reason I'm, reason I'm using this example again is I just don't know a better way to get us where we need to go on this issue. I don't know a better way to drive home the point of how important it is that we number our days and that we live as if our days are numbered. So here's what I want to do. I want to fast forward you to the end of your life. Again, aren't you glad you came today? You're excited, right? But, but do I, I want to fast forward you to the end of your life. And when I do that, we're going to gain some wisdom that we won't get any other way. The, the wisdom that Moses prayed for and the wisdom that, that if, if you and I, if we will gain it and if we will, we will bring it back to our current stage of life, wherever that is, you will make better decisions about what you do with your time moving forward in the future. So are you ready? Here it is. There's a, there was a lady by the name of Bronnie Ware and she was a hospice nurse. She was an Australian hospice nurse and she spent most of her time with men and women during the last few months of, of their lives. And, and as she spent time with her patients during their, during their final days, she would ask them questions, just kind of getting to know them and, and all of that. And, and as she began to ask them questions, one of the questions that she would ask them was this question, do you have any regrets? And, and as she began to listen to them, she would write down their answer. And over time, she began some, to see some patterns in their responses to that question as she was writing them down. So today, to help us fast forward and to get some perspective, to get some wisdom that we won't get any other way, I want to share with you just the top two uh, responses that Bronnie Ware got from people who, who were spending their last few days, weeks, or months uh, on earth. And, and she, she actually wrote a, wrote a whole book about this. I, I can't remember how many responses she has, but I just want to share with you the top two. And here's what they are. The top two the top two regrets that people have. The first one is, I wish I didn't work so hard. Now, that one doesn't surprise us, does it? I mean, nobody's probably surprised about that at all. I wish I didn't work so hard. Here's, a, here's the statement that she makes about this particular insight. Here's what, she, here's what she says. She says, this came from every male patient that I nursed. They missed their children's youth and their partner's companionship. Women also spoke of this regret, but as most of them were from an older generation, many of the female patients had not been breadwinners. All of the men, she says, I nursed, deeply regretted spending so much of their lives on the treadmill of a work existence. So do you know what that means? And, and I think in today's culture, certainly in American culture, this applies to men and women at this point. But it, it means that if we don't number our days, if we don't learn to number our days, we will misspend our time. We will misspend our life. And when we get to the end, we will have an avoidable, an un, an avoidable regret. Because, because when you think you have all the time in the world with your kids and all the time in the world with your spouse and all the time in the world with the people you care about, and suddenly you realize you don't have all the time in the world, you can't get that time back. Our time is the one thing we can't get more of. And, and here's, why, here's why this is so important for us to pay attention to. Because, because these are men and women who are numbering their days because, because they cannot avoid the fact any longer that their days are numbered. And, and this is the wisdom that, that suddenly they're confronted with, and, and we would be wise to learn from this wisdom. And, and, then, and then here's the number one regret. And, and, and before I show it, if, if you're if you're a college-age student, if you're in your 20s, 30s, you need to tune me in if you've tuned me out at this point. Uh, the number one regret was this. I wish I'd had the courage to live a life true to myself, not the life others expected of me. I wish I'd had the courage to live true to myself, 
and who I am and the dreams that I've been given, not what other people or what culture expected me to do. Here's what she said. She said, this was the most common regret of all. When people realize that their life is almost over and look back clearly on it, it is, it, it is easy to see how many dreams have gone unfulfilled. Most people had not honored even half of their dreams and had to die knowing that it was due to choices they had made or had not made. And, and then this, this last statement is not connected to this, but she makes this statement that is just so powerful that I think we probably all need to hear this. And she said this, she said, she said health brings a freedom that we do not realize until it's gone. That our health, that when we are healthy, we have a level of freedom that we don't even know we have until that health is gone. And so when you think about that and we think about how we're living, some of us, you know, the way we're living, the way we're working, the way we're carrying stress, uh, the way we're not eating healthy and exercising and all of that, we need to pay attention to that. Now, I just fast forwarded you to the end. And, and, and now you have the wisdom that comes from living as if your days are numbered. So the question is, what are, you and I, what are we going to do with that wisdom? I mean, what do, you, what do you do with that wisdom when you look at your, your current stage of life? When you, what do you do with that wisdom when you look at your current schedule, when you look at your current pace? Uh, here, here's, here's what I think we should do. I think we should pray these prayers. God, give us the wisdom. Give us the wisdom that comes with living as if our days are numbered. God, God, my time is limited, and that means, God, I have to limit how I spend my time. So, God, give me the wisdom to know how to do that and what the priority is. Now, if you're a follower of Jesus and, and you believe that, that God is a personal God, and I believe we all do, and that God has a plan for your life, you, you need to understand how important this is because God has something that he wants to do, and, 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 if, and if you're not careful you'll miss it because people will determine for you what needs to be in and what needs to be out and what needs to be the priority in your life. Live as if your days are numbered because by doing so, you will automatically, Moses says, you will automatically gain insight. You will automatically gain a heart of wisdom. Now, I want to close. I just want to close by giving you some questions just to think about and, and maybe to talk about them. If you're married, if you're dating someone, it's getting serious, maybe you're engaged, you might want to sit down and have a conversation about some of this. If, and and, and you, if you've got, you've got family, if you've got kids, teenagers, you might want to talk about some of this as a family. Parents, you might want to talk about this with your kids or your students. But, but here are some questions that, that I think we just need to ask and answer and maybe talk about uh, with the most important people in our lives. And the first one is this, what, what, what do I need to add when it comes to my schedule, when it comes to my time, when it comes to having a what do I need to add? You know, what do I need, what do I need to be doing? What, what, what is it that if, if I made it more of a priority, it would actually make my life and my relationships a little bit healthier? So what, what do I need to add? Here's the opposite question. What do I need to subtract? All right? What, what do I need to add? And what do I need to remove completely? And, and then here's the third one. I love this question. What, what needs to be turned up a little bit? In other words, what am I doing right now? But I really need to be doing a little bit more of it. And then the last one, what do I need to do less of? I mean, I mean we, you know, we can't get rid of that altogether, but I'm just spending way too much time on it. You know, we as a couple, we as a family, you know, we, we can't cut that out completely, but we really need to cut it down a little bit. Or, you know, I don't need to quit that hobby altogether, but maybe I need to turn it down a little bit so I can prioritize some other things. I can't, can't quit my job, right, because I need to eat and live indoors, uh, right? But, but, but maybe I don't have to put in 50 plus hours a week into that job. Uh, so ask the questions. I mean, you, you owe it to yourself and you owe it to the, the people closest to you. You owe it to your future self to live with the wisdom that Moses says, the wisdom and the understanding that comes with numbering your days and recognizing that your days are numbered. Because one day, and I'll close with this, one day you will come to the end. But when you get there, you don't have to have regrets as it relates to how you spend your time. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would teach all of us to number our days so that we might gain the wisdom that, that Moses talked about, that we might gain the, the wisdom that, that most people never get, that we might gain a heart of wisdom. And God, help us to remember that 
that our time is limited, so that means we have to limit how we spend our time. Help us to, to ask the, the difficult questions and help us to make the difficult decisions about how we spend our time and how we use our time and what, what is the priority. And ultimately, God, as we do that, I, I pray that it would make us better followers of yours. It would make us better people. It would make us better parents, better spouses, better friends. And, and we would have incredibly healthier relationships. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. I want to thank you for being here this morning. I'm going to be gone the next two Sundays. Uh, Mike Bradley's going to be here next week. You met Mike before about a year ago. Uh, Mike uh, is the assistant executive director. I'm not sure if that's his actual title. Uh, at North Star Church Networks. He's a great guy. Uh, so make him feel welcome next week. And then the following week, young Kim, who pastors uh, New Spring Church that meets here in our space on Sunday afternoons, is going to be here as well. You've, some of you have met, met young um, as well. You know, a few years ago, I, I had taken several Sundays off kind of close together when my dad was sick and, uh, because I needed to be down with my parents a good bit. And uh, my dad, who was a pastor, he said, how are you able to be away so many Sundays? And I said, well, I just have people fill in for me who are a lot better than me. And then nobody cares that I'm gone. So come, you'll enjoy what they have to say. They'll be saying things in a new way. Uh, so so come, and, come and join them and be a part of the next two Sundays. Hope you have a great couple weeks, and I'll see you in three weeks. So let's stand and sing one more time as our team leads us.